Session 10, resourcefulness. Do you want this on YouTube as well? Yep. Okay, cool. Hello, hello. We're good. All right. Cool. Let's start awesome. with the resourcefulness notes uh, with the wall of shame. I don't have anything to add to myself. Uh, I think we're pretty right. damn resourceful. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so welcome to the attempt session on resourcefulness. Um, this reading out the principle. So we are relentlessly resourceful. Um, as we grow and have ready access to capital, it's our obligation to token holders to fight bureaucracy and inefficiencies within the organization. This means solving problems in the most effective way possible at lower economic costs in terms of capital, time, and resources. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's do the generation. Um, And also let's try to finish this up latest uh, half past nine, just so we have time for the other part. I guess we have the notes here. Uh, who wants to guess, uh, go first? All right, uh, actually. Barry? Well, I, I guess, all right, I guess if, if I have to say something, something that's been on my mind lately as far as, as sort of feeling bureaucratic and inefficient is, I guess, our approach to, to designing our, our MVPs. You know, we do, we've, we do these big bang designs that require building the raw materials from scratch rather than using the core components. And if you really step back and think about it, I don't think that is aligned generally with an OKR of many, most OKRs because it, and so if it's not aligned with the OKR, why do it? And then most likely really we're doing it for more bureaucratic reasons or we're doing it for some other reason. Um, which is not explicitly stated um, and which can lead to all kinds of waste and inefficiency. And it creates a longer feedback cycle. So it takes us longer to learn from our users and then to iterate and then to build. And I, my belief is that a lot of this can be, can be done using out of the box components and then iterating on those as we go along. Um, Sorry, that, that was maybe a lot to take in, but. Oh, that's great. Cheers. Awesome. Uh, JB? Uh, yeah, mine's probably, uh, I guess, around like oversight. So, you know, as this hybrid, it's not really clear to me how we make decisions around like how much money we spend on people, on things, on travel. And I know that's partly because we don't want to have traditional hierarchy or managers, but I, I just don't think there's enough visibility or enough um, collective oversight into how we're how we're spending. And, and that probably because that's a, we haven't we have the tools to do that. Right, we don't have the governance. So yeah. I'd add to that, that that we don't have the governance as well to even do that. Cool. Uh... Hello. Uh, I don't have anything to add to this right now. Sorry. Cool. Uh, Ricardo. Uh, I miss like it's strong opinions on on the direction we should take. For example, for uh, the ENS usernames, uh, we I kind of don't know the the the. What, what is the price we should set 
that is an, an important decision and seems like there is not much people that can take an opinion on what should be the price or that can analyze that and give the, 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 a good answer because some people will just think, oh, let, let's ask the maximum price or the minimum price, um, but maybe that should be uh, economic based decision. Yep. Cool. Uh, uh, I agree. Um, Chad? Yeah, I can go next. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to be resourceful if you don't really know what you're building. Um, for example, if, if I'm going to host a dinner party for four people, like I, I can kind of understand, okay, well, I'm going to buy the right portions and I need like, you know, depending on who's coming, two bottles of wine or eight bottles of wine. Um, but for us, it, it feels like, okay, well, it could be for four people. It could be for 200. Um, they could be vegetarians. They could be like meat eaters. Oh, it has to be Thai food. No, it's Chinese. Um, actually, it's not a dinner it's a uh, like a cocktail party or whatever right so i think that the resourcefulness really pay, uh, plays into that and the greater clarity we have around exactly what we're delivering we can be a lot more um disciplined uh about the resources used to get there i love the metaphor by the way <laughs> uh awesome cool um see uh ryan Uh, Sonia? Uh, this is Carrie. I have one if no one else is um, jumping cool. in. I don't know if this is just like a, a me perception, but I feel like, like just talking very externally from like the point of view of someone not very familiar with what we're doing, I think there's like maybe this kind of feeling that there was an ICO and we're like cash rich and that we can just afford to do whatever we want and that money isn't really an issue. Um, so I think it's just kind of getting into that more mindful space of like weighing up all our decisions in terms of like a finite reserve um, of financing and trying to think more in that way. But I think, you know, not to like re bring up a point that's come up all the time, but it's like, again, having that more financial awareness, which we're working towards. I think that'll come in time, but I just think it's kind of like a mindset that we may is may not be obvious right now. Can I latch on to that? Yeah. Um, this is a follow up basically from yesterday. Um, we being resourceful means you understand the resources you have and none of us do. And in order for us to make good decisions on how to be resourceful, we, we need, we need clear insight as to what we have and how to use it appropriately. And, this like, I don't know, this principle in my mind is the weakest out of all of them for me because we've specifically chosen an organizational structure that is inherently inefficient for principal reasons. And in order to be like, and if we're going to speak towards efficiency, we're doing a lot of things in the face of efficiency because of principle. So like a lot of the, like the, the, uh, the pairings that you mentioned in the previous talks, could we could talk about a lot about that during this one? That's an interesting point. Uh, yeah, I would love to talk more about that. Absolutely. Cool. Um, sorry, uh, Sonia. Uh, I think maybe not here. All right, uh, Michael. Yeah, I already. Uh, I started the list. Okay, cool. I'm at the top of the right. list. Oh. Uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said. I'll put myself as a no op uh, right now and maybe change later. Cool. Um, so just very briefly go through some slides here. So just in terms of some background, so relentlessly resourceful, it's, it comes from this sort of essay by a guy called Paul Graham, who founded uh, Y Combinator in terms of sort of what makes good founders. And idea is sort of the opposite of, of being ha hapless. And kind of what we're trying to do here is, is, is it's very difficult and it's sort of novel and we just need to sort of keep trying new things in a sort of um, resourceful way, right? And I think this ties a lot uh, into sort of the idea of permissionless and not relying on authority to sort of try think of just going for it. Um, yeah. There is sort of no magic bucket of cash. There was sort of a bull market 
uh, last year, raised a bunch of money in a one-time event, and uh, we have this implicit promise to these 20,000 something token holders, which is of the white paper, and it's sort of our duty to them to sort of deliver something uh, that's like the white paper. Uh, I wonder, did I? Okay, whatever. Uh, well, what sorts of brokers and infrastructures uh, do you see? Um, how can we be more effective in solving problems at lower cost? And uh, given that there's sort of no traditional profit and loss, and bottom line, and we have sort of a lot of capital reserved for use acquisition, how can we sort of create a sense of urgency and force us to be resourceful? And I think this is to Kerry's point. As with that, uh, I hand over to Michael. So <clears throat> I've had a few conversations with with Carl and Jared uh, over the over the last weeks, um, specifically about this, and I think that a lot of these things are going to be addressed in Prague. I'd like to say to everybody um, that the conversation that I have is that there's awareness about this, that there's unclarity, and there's understanding uh, of things that we need to do. Um, I guess my primary uh, impression from my time at Status now four months is is pretty much summed up in the statement that I made, uh, that I think that we're in, inefficient as a company and we're inefficient as a DAO because we don't have one. Um, <clears throat> and I don't particularly see like bureaucratic problems in that. I just see a, a lack of understanding and a lack of direction because we, we don't have uh, specifically a roadmap to get from here to there. Um, how, did each, how do each of you feel about that? How do you, do you feel like a fish out of water, even having bought into this permissionless organization that's a corporation or, or, or not? I, yeah, I wanna speak up here. I do, but it's partially my fault in terms of I want to do so much and I may spread myself thin in the process of doing that. And so there's no, there's no, there's no strong guiding beacon of this is what I should be doing. And these are my success metrics. It's everyone's kind of left up their own devices. And if you have a lot of ambition, you can, you can spread yourself thin very quickly because there's no guiding, like guiding beacon to push you on the right path. So that's a trade off essentially that we're making. What Each would help in sort of, in terms of, uh, what structure do you think would help in terms of making it more clear? Like not, not spreading yourself too thin and having success metrics and all. What, what, what structure do you think would help ideally in an ideal world? I don't know. Like I, 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 like, I like the rest of the principles and the reasons why we chose to have an organization like this. And I think it's, it's, it's novel and, and worthwhile to try and figure this stuff out. It's just there isn't a good model to do this because no one's done it before. And so like, like I, I can't point to something because it doesn't exist. Okay, I think I can point to, to, to something. I can point to cooperatives in, in Brazil um, that are essentially uh, you know, employee and participant owned businesses, um, which I think that, that status as a corporation could easily become if we, if we chose to go that way. And, and that, that can also be a learning process for us in getting getting to a DAO? So just to jump in, I, I totally agree with Corey. Like, I feel like there's, there's really good examples of remote organizations that work well, of leaderless and permissionless organizations that work well. But there isn't a good example of an organization that is both remote and decentralized and doesn't have managers or leaders. Like, in my, you know, if you look at the big examples, they have one of those aspects. And so I don't feel like there's a good, a good thing that we can just copy or, or seek direction from. We have to build it ourselves. Well, let me be a little bit provocative. Why shouldn't we have leaders? I mean, we have to recognize that there are personalities and, and, and people in the organization that other people rally around. Well, that's true, but they're they're almost self-appointed in a lot of ways. Are they self-appointed, or have they uh, have the, or have they won those uh, positions out of charisma and and merit because they're productive and involved with other people? Well, that's that's what I'm sorry. That's what I may have been meaning when I said self-appointed. It's like they're they're natural-born leaders. It's not people who've been 
thrust into the position. It's people who've, who've kind of assumed it by the merits in which they act. Okay. So Mark uh, Evenson raised an interesting question after, after being around status for about 10 days. And he said, do we have a place in, in the organization for competent or does everybody have to be a rock star? And this, for me, is part of the, the, you know, so the leadership question, right? Uh, one, one, one way of thinking about this, just a lens that might be interesting to entertain. So let's say that no, none of us had any kind of salaries. It was a completely voluntary open source product. Then would it actually matter if some were less productive and some people, like, like people worked on different directions and so on, like would that actually be a problem in this sort of ultimate permissionless, no compensation model? And then... If there wouldn't be a problem, then the question is how do you how do you sort of make a marriage between that and the compensation in order to sort of have full time effort on certain critical issues and so on? Well, it hasn't status pretty much said it doesn't matter, right? You guys can do whatever it is that you want to do, and this is part of what it is that you do. Isn't that like sort of like actively encouraged? Are we making a mistake in holding ourselves to a different standard because people are being compensated? Should we maybe just leave that behind? And say, okay, we're just doing what we would all. I mean, pretty much everybody here is is, is also would also be here without money if they had their own money. Um, uh, so, am I being clear, like, or or am I just sort of in a grammatical uh, uh, can, stack? Can I offer up a suggestion regarding the? I mean, to Corey's point with regards to being kind of stretched, or like, there's too many opportunities arising at once, and and. I guess working on too many of them. Um, I guess a rule, let's call it like a maybe a norm, of core contributors can only work on one swarm or one team at a time. That way, you gain, you guaranteeing someone's a hundred percent dedication to to whatever swarm they're working on, but yet they still have the freedom to to leave and go into a different uh, project. Yeah, we're all, it's classic startup territory. We're all wearing multiple hats. You know, there's everybody that I know in the organization is doing things that are not really like their core competency or that are part of their skill set from, from different parts of their lives. Isn't that classic, classic startup structure? I'd be curious to hear, uh, Corey, if you had some more thoughts on the pairing stuff like specifically in terms of inefficiencies and what you might see as a way of resolving that? Well, I don't think there's going to be a resolving to it. Uh, to start, it's, I think we're placing some of these principles ahead of others in the sense that like, yeah, we can say we can, we're going to be as efficient as we can, but not at the cost of the other principles. And in order to be truly decentralized and truly transparent and ultimate private. Like if we are, if we're going to uphold those other principles, then we have to suffer at the cost of efficiency. And that, I don't think there's any way of getting around that. We can create the most efficient systems based on this principle set, but that needs to be well known. Like, and, and we're going to, we're going to suffer a lot of like, just like think, think about Slack. Slack was efficient. It may have not been free and useful, I was like, sorry, free and efficient in terms of like how much it cost all of us to have it, but it was very easy to communicate. And we, we gave that up on the, on the, on the, on our principal set. But we're, we're winning a faster pace of development because you're right. And that, 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 you see what I mean by the trade off though? Like we, we may take organizational trade offs at the cost of efficiency, but they're, they're worthwhile, but that needs to be well known. Yeah, I think um, you'll, you'll see it in more than one principle. And uh, the interesting thing is um, the conversation around it when they do seemingly uh, contradict each other. Um, this, this seminar discussion is, is part of that, of us doing these, these balancing. Are, do you guys all feel that we're being resourceful with our use of time? Uh, in doing this, this, uh, the, this last two weeks, because Oscar had mentioned, you know, it's how many, how many work hours it is for the combination of people that are, that are contributing to this. Are we being resourceful in doing this exercise? I think so. I think people are being heard. And if, even, even if people aren't speaking up, they're, they're rallying behind the people who are. And it, it, because of that, they feel like their, their voices are heard too. And I, and 
that's a, that's a, it's a, I think it's a big thing and there's not a lot of opportunity in an organization like this for that to happen. And so things like this would then lead to really, really, really quality discussions in Prague when we're all together. And so when we're in Prague and we're all together, those like rare events where we have a large, the, almost the, the main percentage of the entire organization together, we can have really, really productive talks. Okay, so let me, uh, let me ask a final question in the round then before we move on to, to doing the Prague Wall of Shame. Uh, document. Is this something we should do on a quarterly basis? This exercise? Examining our principles and the trade-offs that we're making and, 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 and examining what, uh, to what degree we're holding to our standards. At what, at what pace should we be doing this? Well, I one, think, one slight, I think, slight tweak on that is to, as well as like focusing on our on wall of shame and things that we're not doing right. Um, we should also take a moment to celebrate on how we are meeting our principles and how we are, how we are doing well to, to balance it out as well. And I agree. Uh, status desktop is a, is a testament to what we're capable of doing. Well, status, everything is a testament. I'm still, I'm still totally impressed with, with, with this product and, and this team and what they've done in a year. When I look around in the whole, in the whole space, I think we're all pretty hard on ourselves. Well, so one way of phrasing this wall of shame, uh, depending on if you're, you like sticks or carrots, but you could also see it as a book of opportunity. Uh, so if people prefer that, that would be another way of thinking about it. As, as for how to do it, my, my idea, I don't know what people's thoughts are, but we could have this sort of longer session, like seminars as we sort of, uh, as our collective brains and so on gets upgraded, we could do it maybe quarterly or half a year or whatever. But then maybe there's, there's room also for having it more regular follow-up. So, for example, when it comes to transparency or inclusivity and so on, it's often maybe it's not everyone's first sort of uh, job or responsibility and so on. So we sort of miss opportunities to, to improve on a weekly basis. So maybe that could be something. I don't know what the structure of that would look like, but having some, some format where we could have these types of discussions. Cool. So let's make that an action point and let's get this into the voting DAP as a as a as a point of action does anybody have anything else they want to add to resourcefulness before we move on to doing the prog wall of shame uh exercise cool so why don't you pull us into that one oscar turn it over to you all right Cool. So, so just some background. Um, let's see. Can you guys see my, see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, so this is document, right? Um, no. And essentially, what we did um, back in Basel is that we had people because of come up with all the same stuff uh, as before, but then we had sort of this live uh, round where people could say like, "Well, these are actually the same thing." Um, and um, here are some more details. I don't understand what this one is and so on. And then we voted on them. So it's a great opportunity for us to vote on this in person with a wider group of co-contributors and community members in Prague. But in order for that sort of voting to be meaningful, uh, it's not enough to sort of just have this brainstorm kind of list um, that we have right now. So what I was thinking is that we have these sort of sections that we come up with. We have openness and uh, inclusivity and so on. And my thinking is that we have um, a set of people, like maybe two, three people per sort of section. And then we sort of take five, 10 minutes uh, to sort of rewrite these and add some more clarity. As an example of this, uh, you have this sort of, uh, you have some sort of brief title. It's like actually a problem. It's clear what success looks like. It's understandable. It doesn't sort of conflict with other ones. Uh, maybe it violates multiple principles and maybe some details. Uh, and then we can sort of time box that and then we can, we can rotate. So each sort of person touches multiple sections. And what we can get from that then is that we can have sort of this detail thing and do some kind of presentation in Prague and then vote for it. And just as an example, I, I pulled out um, the top 10 principles uh, before um, from Basel and, and you can sort of imagine visualizing this. this you, we don't have to go overboard like this, but, but just in terms of um, how we can sort of think about this and make this more accessible to people. So that's, that sort of format makes sense. 
in terms of what we what what, what to do. So essentially, the, the step would be that uh, each one of us on the call sort of just raise your hand and sort of I'm I'm going to work on this this section. So maybe someone says I want I want to work on fleshing out the openness section, uh, and so on. Are there any any questions or thoughts on that? Well, that's a really hard choice for me to make right now. Which one it is that I'd like to raise my hand on? Cool. Maybe. So so yeah, uh, let's just uh, it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't matter that much, right? It's just 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 so, so I guess let's just go go for you people, and then whatever principle you care the most about uh, or hasn't been taken, uh, just go for it. Uh, so Barry, which one do you want to start with? Yeah, I don't know. There's a. It's hard to pick. I guess. Uh, okay, let's just. Yeah. Decentralization, I guess. Okay, cool. Chat. Sorry, just reading over them again. Uh, the clear narratives. Clear narratives. Sorry. Yeah, he's asking for. Uh, for ownership of the of the ten individual principles, Chad. Not a specific point under one of them. So, so all of the people on this call, you can also just write down your name in this document under owners as well. Okay, I'll uh, I'll write down my name after I read them again. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and take openness. That seems to be my. Okay, cool. Uh, and I guess, yeah, Corey, perfect, George wrote down. Uh, openness, Michael, uh, Graham. JB? Uh, I'm in towards decentralization, but I'd like to, to read a bit more in depth before I pull the trigger. Okay. So, all right. Uh, it, it doesn't matter that much. It's, it's more, we're just going to spend like uh, 10 minutes on this. So it's, uh, all right, okay. JB, Kim? Transparency for me. Cool. Uh, liberty, liberty for me. Yeah, Kim, that sounds yes. right. Rally, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was hoping uh, you'd say openness because I think we could kick on that one. But if you go for liberty, man, that's good. Cool. Uh, Lalo, uh, Ryan, Sonia. Oh, I don't think we have anything on liberty, but yeah, you can just get started with that. Absolutely, that, that's cool. Well, liberty we're doing tomorrow, so. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Ryan, Ricardo. So okay, I'm, I think censorship resistance would be cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty pretty much you. <laughs> cool. So we have openness, inclusivity, sense of resistance, security, decentralization, privacy. Who wants to own that one? Yeah, there's people on this that aren't on this call that need to own that one. But that might okay. be a good one for you, Oscar, actually. I, yeah, I could, I could take it if there's no one else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, transparency, we got uh, resourcefulness and continuous. We need to move over the, the docs. Resourcefulness, anyone? That would be Corey, man. He's already on security. So oh, I think right. we have 17 what, people. Why on would this. that be me? Resourcefulness? Karen? Well, because, yeah. you know, it's just this whole last conversation that we've had. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, yeah I, I'm opinionated. I'll give you that. Yeah. So add yourself on there. We can, oh, you know, these don't have to yeah, be sole, sole. Just We can just have multiple contributors. Yeah. Yeah. Danny, yeah, sure. privacy. put me on there. It's fine. Awesome. Um, Cool. Uh, Continuous. Sonia. Is Sonia committed? Well, I'm I'm encouraging her to commit, <laughs> but she may be drinking coffee. <laughs> do, do, do I have to? Uh, so, uh, what kind of input do I have to give? Uh, so, first for for continuous, we need to move over over the sort of documents, but then just sort of uh, add some more colors. There's an example template here, uh, just in terms of. Sort of adding a bit more details on it and making it clear so what success might look like and so on. And it, it can just be a draft, right? We're not going to get this, just sort of roughly get started on this and so people can understand what, what these items mean. 
quite cool. So I think we got pretty good coverage. I'll sort of jump in. Do we do inclusivity? I... Is there somebody only inclusivity? Because that's a that's a people ops thing. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think Chaz doing. Quite cool. So so let's just take uh, maybe ten minutes on this one, and then we can revisit. Sounds good. Uh, ten minutes meaning. Uh... Just just yeah, just take ten minutes in terms of writing this. Like so, just, let's just get started and edit it, and then we can revisit and maybe swap things around so people can I, touch multiple sections. Before before we start, I want to I want to get a, another like, uh, like, what the hell's going on? Like, what do I need to do here? Just so, just, so just word vomit on all of these things, or yeah, exactly. So essentially, you see, right now we just have one like some like a brainstorm thing that it's just like a line, right? But yeah. we want to have it be more like the the sort of example template. Uh, where sort of there's some title, there's some elaboration. It's clear that it's sort of understandable and it's actually a problem and not just like some some thoughts. And 